Good morning, it's the 1st of August 2022. I'm Sarah Harris. Here's what's making news on 10 News First Breakfast. Australia's energy crisis, the nation's gas supply, faces its biggest shortfall in almost a decade. What it will mean for your next bill. A dream start in the top job, Anthony Albanese's approval rating soars to a record high. Bitter brew, beer drinkers hit with the biggest tax hike in 30 years. And Emma McKeon makes history, the Aussie superstar blitzing the field in the final of the 50 metre freestyle. This is 10 News First. Good morning. Australia's gas supply is facing its biggest shortfall in seven years, fueling skyrocketing prices and blackouts. The consumer watchdog is releasing a report today warning households could be left in the dark unless the big three exporters keep their gas for domestic markets. A backpacker's trip from Bali to Darwin has become the world's most expensive Macca's run. The traveller was sprung at Darwin Airport with a haul of undeclared items and fined more than $2,500. Two sausage and egg muff McMuffins from a Bali McDonald's were seized, as well as a ham croissant. Just two days after the New South Wales Premier declared his support for her, Dominic Perrottet has sacked his workplace safety minister, Eleni Patinos, over claims she'd bullied staff. An anonymous complaint accused the embattled Miranda MP of abusing her team. Well, Australia has had another golden day in Birmingham. Swimmer Emma McKeon has become the first most, I should say, decorated Aussie athlete to compete at the Commonwealth Games. And 10 News First, Jade Koddick joins us now live from Birmingham. Jade, wow, tell us about Emma Keehan. She swam into the history books. Sarah, it was an incredible performance, to say the least. It was the We also saw gold in the women's gymnastics today. Georgia uh, Godwin, she took home silver in the 2018 Commonwealth Games, um, uh, Commonwealth Games on the Gold, Gold, Gold Coast in 2018. Tonight, she came back and she claimed gold. So it's been successful all day, particularly for the women, Sarah. Yeah, gold rush for the girls. Jade Koddick there. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, he's barely been in the job three months, but new Prime Minister Anthony Albanese is already enjoying a record approval rating not seen since Bob Hawke was Prime Minister in 1985. News poll puts Mr Albanese's approval rating at 61%. That's a 20% jump on the last poll and a record for an incoming Prime Minister. He's also ahead as preferred Prime Minister, leading Peter Dutton 59 to 25. Support for Labor has also increased post-election, 56 to the coalition's 44. That's almost an almost four-point jump for Labor since the May election. At least 40 people have died with COVID in Queensland nursing homes last month, half of those in the last seven days. New data shows 231 aged care facilities have active outbreaks in the Sunshine State, representing 46% of nursing homes. The state recorded more than 4,600 daily new cases in its most recent figures. Well, the beautiful game turned ugly in Sydney last night after a brawl between soccer fans erupted after the Australia Cup match. Flares were thrown and families were caught up in the violence at Leichhardt Oval and 10 News First reporter Samara Gardner is there. Samara, good morning. What happened? Good morning. Yes, crowds were just starting to leave the grounds here at Leichhardt Oval last night following a match between Sydney FC and the Central Coast Mariners when, of course, uh, this violent brawl did break out. Now, more than a dozen people could be seen. A man has been seriously injured in a violent home invasion in Western Sydney overnight. Police were called to a home on Federal Road at Seven Hills just after 10pm over Sydney. a pool wearing a long dress and black flat shoes. Police say they're heavily relying on new information to locate the woman. There are reports this morning New South Wales Trade Minister Stuart Ayres is battling for his job over John Barillaro's appointment to a $500,000 a year plum trade job in New York. The Daily Telegraph says Minister Ayres has been phoning Liberal colleagues to Australians are being squeezed by cost of living pressures in the supermarket and at the petrol bowser. Now get set to feel the pinch at the pub. Beer is about to get a lot more expensive. The tax on the amber drink is set to rise 4%, the biggest increase in 30 years. 
The Brewers Association of Australia says it will soon cost $15 for a pint. The lobby is calling on the Albanese government to slash the tax in its October budget. Well, still to come this morning on 10 News First Breakfast, reconciliation pushed the Prime Minister's historic speech proposing an Indigenous voice to Parliament. And remembering the great Archie Roach. This morning, we're celebrating the life of the singer, truth teller and First Nations champion. Welcome back. Five years since the Uluru Statement from the Heart was delivered to Parliament, Prime Minister Anthony Albanese has formally set in motion the process of enshrining an Indigenous voice in the Constitution. While attending the Gama Festival in North East Arnhem Land on the weekend, the Prime Minister outlined the proposed wording of an historic referendum. I am determined as a government, as a country, and we have to. Lowitcher Institute Chair Selwyn Button joins us now from Brisbane. Selwyn, good morning to you. Just how significant was the Prime Minister's announcement over the weekend? Good morning, Sarah, and good morning to your viewers. Look, the, the sig significance of the announcement of the weekend um, is something that is very much felt across Indigenous communities nationally. Um, it's been something we've been waiting for for a long time. It's been five years since Uluru's statement, but it's also been many years prior to that that many people have been involved in conversations with previous Prime Ministers and previous governments um, about what this should look like and, and getting to the point of constitutional recognition. So it is something that we've been waiting for for a while. The concerns that a First Nations body that doesn't... Uh, that might not actually have any power to create change. Um, what do you make of those criticisms? Look, I, I think people start to jump to what the functions look like before we've even had a chance to, to get an understanding of what we're trying to achieve. Um, having a voice to Parliament, having a, a group of people, elected people, provide advice on a regular basis to politicians um, and to executive government is very much about informing how you know, they meet 50 odd years split, 50 odd years apart. It provides an opportunity for Australia as a nation to, to use that date as an opportunity um, to do something significant. You're absolutely right. Um, Selwyn, before we let you go, we must offer our sincere condolence as well for the loss of, uh, of Archie Roach over the weekend. Um, just how important was he as, as a trailblazer and truth teller for Indigenous Australians? Look, Uncle Archie Roach um, was a giant of a man um, and the work that he'd done not just through his music and his, in his song and his stories, but certainly about providing that spotlight on the stolen generation and highlighting the needs um, and making sure that people who were affected um, by those policies and were part of the stolen generation, that they were given a voice. Um, and they were certainly given a voice uh, through the music of Uncle Archie Roach. Beautifully said. Selwyn Button, thanks for your time this morning. Appreciate it. Thank you. A private memorial ceremony will be held for Australian music icon Archie Roach, the pioneering Indigenous artist who drew global attention to the stolen generation, as we heard, died at age 66 after a long fight with illness. And a warning to our Indigenous viewers, this report contains images of Archie with the permission of his family. Well, up next on 10 News First Breakfast, a family's fight, the parents of murdered schoolgirl Tanya Burgess, pushed to identify the teenage murderer. Seventeen years after murdering 15-year-old Tanya Burgess on the New South Wales Central Coast, her killer will be released from jail today. Legally, we can't name Tanya's murderer, as the man was just... Chloe Burris for 10 News First. All right, let's take a look at the weather now across the country and in Brisbane. You've got a shower or two coming your way in 21 degrees. Canberra, showers, then mostly sunny. In Sydney, a medium chance of showers, then a mostly sunny afternoon. In Hobart, you can expect partly cloudy conditions and a top of 13 degrees. Melbourne, also partly cloudy and 16. Adelaide, possible shower and 15 degrees. Perth, showers and a possible storm in the afternoon. And in Darwin, mostly sunny conditions expected and 32 degrees. Well, that is 10 News First Breakfast for this Monday. Narelda is back on the desk tomorrow. Thank you for your company and your patience. Join me and Tristan next for Studio 10. Bye for now. Coming up on Studio 10, Royal Wishes. Good luck, I hope you win. Bye. Princess Charlotte cheers on her favourite team in a sweet video message.
Plus, former yellow wiggle Emma Watkins introduces us to her exciting new kids character. And we're catching up with Scary Spice. Mel B takes us behind the scenes of this season's wackiest show, The Masked Singer. Huge morning from Australia. Uh, Sarah Harris has finally cracked. She has missed her 8 a.m. starts here on Studio 10 so much. Today she took on the breakfast news and smashed it. Well done. Oh. That was awesome. What a morning for you. Well, Lockie's unwell at yeah. the moment. Um, so I stepped in. I have not read the news for about 12 years. It's and how was it? Big morning. <laughs> Very big morning. Um, it was great. But it was, it was, it was fun. It was fun. But Narelda, you've got proper news reader back on the desk tomorrow and Wednesday. That's so fantastic. Hopefully Lockie's did you, did okay. you go with uh, fake news today or you're on? <sighs> All real news, mate. All real news, of course I was. Ten news first breakfast, come on. You're dead right. And how about the real news, huh? I know. What about the, the gold rush that is happening in Birmingham at the moment? Gold medal haul at the Com Games overnight. Emma McKeon becoming the most decorated Commonwealth Games athlete of all time, 11 gold medals. She said that she is mentally in the best space.